فإن اتبعت سبيلهم فموفق وإن ابتدعت فما عليك If you want to see an example of what happens when the Muslim rulers lose their authority, even if they have a level of corruption with them, even if they have a level of corruption as long as they are Muslims, and people stop listening to them and rebelling against them, and the unity of the Muslims goes, if you want to see a proof of this, then look to the Muslim Ummah today. There isn't a Muslim country almost in which there is complete safety and security. And all of that has changed within three or four years. Within three or four years, the Muslim world, especially the Arab world, went from an area in which, yes, there was corruption, yes, there was oppression, but there was a level of security. People used to live their lives, you know, things were going. To now in which there is complete chaos. And economies of the Muslims have been totally destroyed. And who has benefited from this? Has a single Muslim country benefited from these springs and revolutions? Only the enemies of Islam. And don't be surprised if the enemies of Islam have a hand in there. And those people who are removed, has anybody come who is better than them? Same people, same system. And this shows how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained this principle in both ways. Number one, in the Sharia through the Hadith and the Sunnah and the Quran. And this is what's most important for us. And then after, and after this, this through, through that which we that see which around, us, around us and more so in the time that we are living in today. And as I mentioned, <coughs> the manhaj of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the methodology of the Imams who came before us, that which the Prophet ﷺ clarified is that we carry on showing obedience and listening to the authority of the Muslim rulers who are above us even if there is a level of corruption or oppression. Why? Because this is what the Prophet ﷺ told us to do. That's it. I'm not interested in political theories or human rights charters. I'm interested in what the Prophet ﷺ told us to do. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, إِذَا كَانَ الْإِمَامُ عَادِلًا فَلَهُ الْأَجْرُ وَعَلَيْكُمُ الشُّكَرُ that if the Imam, if your ruler, he is Adilan, he is a person of justice, he rules with justice, then for him is the reward and upon you is to show shukr. That you should show gratitude and thanks. in kana ja'iran, And if your Imam is a person who oppresses, فَعَلَيْهِ الْوِزَرْ وَعَلَيْكُمُ الصَّبْرِ Then upon him is the punishment from Allah and for you is patient. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ and Allah is with those who are patient. And Hudayfa radiallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim, the hadith is authentic. He narrated the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, Yakunu ba'di a'imma la yahtaduna bihadi. That after me, there will be a'imma, imams, multiple imams. And they will not act according to my guidance. Wala yastannuna bi sunnati. And they will and not, they will not act, act according to my, to my sunnah. sunnah. فيهم رجال. فيهم رجال. There will be there men, will be amongst, men them, amongst, amongst them, amongst the rulers. The rulers. They, will the they will have the have corrupt, corrupt hearts, hearts like shayateen, hearts like shayateen, hearts like shayateen but the bodies of humans. humans. Their oppression, their oppression and, their and their corruption will be so severe that their hearts will be like the hearts of the shayateen and their bodies are human flesh. قُلْتُ كَيْفَ أَصْنَعُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ حُذَيْفَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ He said, And what should I do, O Messenger of Allah? If that happens, I come to a time where there's multiple rulers and they are so corrupt and so oppressive that it's like the hearts are from the hearts of shayateen, the bodies of humans. مَا مَا أَصْنَعُ What should I do? The Prophet said, إِسْمَعْ وَأَطِعْ وَإِنْ ضَرَبَ ظَهْرَكْ وَأَخَذَ مَالَكْ Listen to him. Accept his authority, show obedience to him, even if he beats your back and he takes your wealth. And the only situation in which it is permitted for a person to rebel against a ruler who was a Muslim is when two conditions are fulfilled. The first condition is that that ruler, he has to have with him absolute, clear kufr 
in which there's no difference of opinion and there's no doubt there's no doubt there's no difference of opinion nothing is hidden absolute clear kufr that he is doing this is the first condition and the second condition is that you have to have the ability to remove him and replace him with somebody who is better and we can add one more condition and the religion is built upon this condition that the mafasid are not greater than the masalih that the potential harms of you removing him don't outweigh any benefits of you fighting against him and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and the hadith is in sahih bukhari he said wala tunazi ala amr ahlahu that do not fight the affair from its people i from the people of authority don't fight the authority إلا أن تروا منه كفرا بواحا عندكم من الله فيه برهان. until you see from him not just كفر كفر بواح absolute clear كفر for which you have an evidence from Allah. and then on top of this after this then comes القدرة then comes do you have the ability to fight him do you have the ability to replace him with a system which is better and then after this comes المصالح والمفاسد and Shaykh Al-Sam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, he mentions that there's never been an instance in history in which a rebellion has caused a ruler to be removed except that the one who comes in his place is more evil. And this is what we see today. But at the same time, as I mentioned, it isn't allowed for us to obey that ruler in anything which is disobedience to Allah. Anyway, the point was that there can be no obedience to creation when there is disobedience to Allah. So if your parents or the ruler, we're talking about the rulers, if they order you to go against Allah, then we don't accept. But this doesn't mean that we rebel against them. And after this, you have to know that rebellion against the rulers, which goes against all of these ahadith, it isn't only by fighting with the sword. Rather, Rather, even a word and a statement can be a form of rebellion. A person, a imam, standing on the pulpit and speaking and shouting against the rulers, even this is considered as al-khuruj. What is the evidence? Because we're only interested in the hadith of the Prophet The evidence is the first of the khawarij. The first of the khawarij was Dhul Khuwaisara. And how did he rebel against the Prophet ﷺ? Not by fighting, not by a sword, not by a rebellion, with a word. He said, I'dil ya Muhammad. He said, be just, O Muhammad. Just this word. Be just, O Muhammad. And because of that word, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّهُ سَيَخْرُجُ مِنْ ضِئْضِ أَهَذَ الرَّجُلْ أَقْوَانَ That from the lineage of this person, people will come out. And they will be young. Sufahal ahlam, silly dreams and visions. He said, "Tahqiruna salatakum bi salatihi, ma salatihi." That you, the companions, when you compare your prayers with the prayers of those khawarij, then you will belittle your prayers. Not talking about our prayers, the prayers of the companions against the khawarij. Wa tahqiruna siyamakum ma siyamihi, and you will belittle your fasting in comparison to their fasting. Yet Luna Kitab Allah, they will recite the book of Allah. Wala yujawiz hanajira. Yet it will not go past the throat, meaning it will not enter into their hearts. And the ulama have mentioned that one of the things which causes the heart of a person to be hardened is breaking a trust or a responsibility. Whether it is your trust and responsibility with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or whether it is a promise that you promise people and you keep breaking it. Why? Because Ayatul Munafiq from the indicators of Nifaq is Ida Wa'ad Akhlaf. Whenever he promises, he breaks his promise. Or even if it is the treaties and the agreement that you have with the Muslim ruler. Then if you break these treaties and these promises, these contracts, then perhaps Allah will harden your heart. And for this reason, they said regarding the Khawarij, that despite them praying and fasting and reciting the Book of Allah, nothing enters into their heart. It only stops over there. Why? Because their hearts have been hardened.
And Allah said in the Quran, فَبِمَا نَقْضِهِمْ مِيثَاقَهُمْ لَعَنَّاهُمْ وَجَعَلْنَا قُلُوبَهُمْ قَاسِيًا That because of them breaking their trust, breaking their contracts, breaking their treaties, breaking their promises, we curse them. وَجَعَلْنَا قُلُوبَهُمْ قَاسِيًا And we made their hearts hardened. So this is from one of the major principles of our religion. And as I mentioned, the statement of the Salaf, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are mutawatir. And then the author, he said, and we'll finish with this inshallah, ثُمَّ صَارَ هَذَا الْأَصْلِ لَا يُعْرَفْ إِنْدَ أَكْثَرِ مِمَّنْ يَدْعِيَ الْعِلْمِ فَكَيْفَ الْعَمَلُ بِهِ That this principle, even those people who are known to have knowledge, even though they don't know anything about this principle, neither do they teach this principle. Never mind actually implementing this principle. The scholars of Ahl Sunnah, they wrote about the issue of Asam wa Ta'a. Their khutab were regarding Asam wa Ta'a. Their lessons were regarding Asam wa Ta'a. And as I mentioned, the hadith are in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim and they are mutawatir. But all of those other scholars or callers who call to rebellions and so on and demonstrations and removing rulers, do you ever find a single lesson from them regarding a sum ta'a? Do you find a single khutbah from them regarding a sum ta'a? The only thing you have from them, let's incite the youth, incite the youth, get out onto the streets. And that person, he remains in his home, in his palace, with his children, and yet the youth are lost to out there. Uh, uh, <coughs> in my, uh, in my uh, uh, town, 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 there was a brother, was a brother who used to attend my lessons. my lessons. And at that time, we used to teach the 40 hadith of Al Imam al Nawawi. And this brother, this brother mashallah, he had a you know, beard, he was beard, practicing, he was practicing and, and he used to give dawah in the, in the town center. He was a very active, very mashallah. mashallah. And then all of a sudden, he's left. He's left, he's left. He's he's left Britain and he's gone to a particular country where there was a lot of fighting. And I don't know if his parents gave him permission, his parents didn't give him permission, maybe his mother is crying at home, Allah knows best. When he went there to fight, thinking that I'm leaving Kufr and I'm going to fight for the sake of Islam. When he got there, what he saw was that he was being ordered to kill the Muslims. It wasn't the, it's not the churches that are being blown up, not that it's correct to blow up a church of course, ever. But it was the, it's the masajids that are being blown up. What do you see what now you being see blown up? Isn't the hospitals and the massages are constantly blown up? And I know this person uh, personally, he used to attend my lessons and his brother told me afterwards. So this brother, he went to the people he was fighting with, I'm not going to name who they are, and he said to them, look, I left Kufr to come aid Islam. I didn't come to kill Muslims, so I'm taking a step back. You know what happened? He was assassinated. And this is jihad. This is how the Islamic State is going to be established. So, the true jihad, the true Islamic State, it isn't established by sufahal ahlam. You know, young foolish people of visions. It's through usul, through principles, through knowledge. And as I mentioned, this is one of the famous principles of the Sharia. Anna min tamamil ijtima' asam wa ta'a liman ta'amara alayna. That from the perfection and the completion of, uh, of uh, unity is a person showing obedience to the people who have authority over him. And Al Imam Al Barbahari, Rahimullah, he said, Ida ra'ayta rajulan yad'u li sultan, fa'lam annahu sahib sunnah. That if you see a person and he's making dua for the ruler, even if the ruler is corrupt, oh Allah, rectify the ruler. Oh Allah, give him a good. Give him good advisors. Oh Allah, bless, bestow upon him the rule of the Sharia. They know that this person is from the people of the Sunnah. Because one of the indicators of the people of the Sunnah was they dua for other people. And more so, they dua for the rulers. And the more corrupt and oppressive the ruler came, the more they would make dua for that person. And if you see a person supplicating against the ruler, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ صَاحِبُ بِدْعَةِ They know that he's from the people of innovation. And Al-Fudayl ibn al-Iyad, rahimullah, he said, لَوْ كَانَ لِي دَعْوَةٌ مُسْتَجَابَةٌ That if I only had one final dua that I knew it was going to be answered, he said, لَجَعَلْتُهَا لِسُلْطَانِ Then I would make it for the ruler. If I only had one 
dua that was going to be answered, I would make it for the ruler, not against the ruler, not even for myself. And making dua for the rulers and not rebelling against them and trying to preserve the unity and the blood of the Muslims and the property of the Muslims, only a believer who has a clean heart can do this. And this is the difference between Sahib al-Sunnah and Sahib al-Bid'ah. Sahib al-Sunnah, he makes dua for the ruler. Sahib al-Bid'ah, he gets on the pulpit, the member, and he starts blasting and inciting the youth and causing the Muslim youth to be lost. So, so this, this type of iman, iman is only find, found in the heart of a Muslim, of a mu'min, who has no ghil in his heart. He has no hatred, no jealousy, no hatred in his heart. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say? The three things, the heart of a true person of iman will never have this type of hatred and jealousy over it. He said, Ikhlasul said, Amali Lillah, lillah that, a that a person being sincere in the worship of Allah. Nowadays we see people that they mock the da'wah of at tawheed They say to you, at tawheed at tawheed is that all you have at tawheed How long are you going to carry on calling to at tawheed This type of person, his heart has a ghil, it has something in it, some disease in it, which is causing him to speak against al ikhlas and at tawheed And secondly, Luzum al jamaa The believer who has a clean heart. He always wants the Muslims to be united. And then finally, and sincere advice to the, those who have authority over you. And if you remember previously, I mentioned the statement of Umm al Mu'minin wa Umm Aisha radiallahu anha. She said, that give every person the correct rank and the correct station. Deal with every person according to his position that he has. When it comes, when it comes to, to giving sincere, sincere advice, 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 then we don't give, don't give one, one same type same of sincere, sincere advice to everybody. To everybody. So the poor and the rich and the, and the, the, the ruler and the subject and the father and the grandfather and the grandson, we deal with them and speak with them all in the same way. Rather, the Prophet wasallam told us how to give different types of advice. So as for the youngster and the old, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Laysa minna mallam yarham saghirana wa yuwakkal kabirana. That the one who does not have mercy upon the children, this is how we give advice to the children, through mercy. And the one who does not have tawqeer of dignity and honor of the elders, he is not from us. This is how we give advice to an elder, through dignity and maintaining his position. And when it comes to nasiha between the people, then as for the ruler, whoever wants to give nasiha to the ruler, فَخُذُوا بِيَدِهِ Then take him by his hand. Meaning, if you have the ability, take him by his hand, go to a corner and advise him in private. And as for the manabir and the books, then these are not places for uh, inciting the youth against the ruler. So this is based upon the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ.